Okay, Ellen, welcome to the sofa. Thank you. Um, hello, live streamers, good morning. Um, this is what we're going to do after every talk. We have a little chat um, for people that have just seen the talk on the live stream or people that are watching it afterwards and they might not have seen the live stream yet, so they might be just watching this and, and maybe not the talk. Um, if we can kick off, I, you have an incredibly interesting career and I think a lot of people as hardware has become more and more interesting and more and more kind of accessible. Yeah. People looking to uh, role models like yourself being like, how do I become <laughs> what she's doing? Um, is there any points in your career path where you made decisions and you've looked back and you've gone, I'm really happy I chose that path or that path or steps that you took that really were decisive in, in taking you where you are now? Yeah, I mean, early on I actually chose um, an education that was practice based okay. and that was perfect for me yeah. to uh, study two years where you actually learn to learn okay. and uh, you don't read much, you actually get in and get burnt. And why did you do that? Uh, and why? Yeah, where, sorry. Uh, at Hyper Island in ah, Kaskruna. Okay. This was uh, around 2000 yeah. uh, before they gone big and uh, yeah, I think they were quite new in that kind of uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, methods. I didn't even realize they had that actually to begin with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So choosing, pra and is that because you enjoyed the practical work? Or you just felt uh, if that was the direction you were going to go, you should start out by doing not like reading? Well, I think it's about finding your way of learning and actually reflect on how you learn. I realized that my job is to learn. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. It's always. A uh, certain space of uncertainty in every project, yeah. and yeah, so that's how it started. Yeah, important learning, I think, in itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need this exactly. Okay, nice. There's been a lot of talk yesterday, and I assume there will be today. And I know there is in the hardware community about open source. Mm -hmm. um, open source hardware has a great, great association around it, and yeah. uh, same in the JS community. Is there anything that you can see happening in that community that feels like a threat? But kind of, well actually, there's a lot of things that feel like a threat to the mm -hmm. open source movement. What is the biggest threat at the moment in your eyes to the to the open source? Oh, I'm not sure. I think the big companies have bigger threats because uh, talking about, for instance, Internet of Things, uh, all the big companies that do. Uh, 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 hardware and put in uh, connectivity in it, yeah. they have to come up with a standard that keeps going for years and years yeah, okay. for support for customers. Yeah. But what makers do is that they create their own uh, circuit boards uh, and they actually put add ons on yeah, like so things in our home. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know if there's a threat for the open source that I can see. I think it's more of a threat. That's interesting, the yeah. other way around, trying to kind of uh, utilize what open source has created in a more standardized way. Yeah, yeah I un mean, that's unlucky. a huge, <laughs> uh, it's a huge challenge. Do you think it's a challenge that needs to be taken? Or do you think it's okay if they don't have to like adapt, if it just keeps Ooh. being more open source and kind of independent? I hope both. Uh, in 2000, I worked with Intelligent Homes, yeah. Ericsson El and Electrolux, uh, uh, company and I think uh, or a little has happened since then and I would love for it to happen more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, things do change quickly which is great. Are the things that you learnt in, uh, maybe actually with JavaScript as well because you're kind of very much taking both, both parts, uh, mm -hmm. hardware and software, are the things that you learnt maybe five years ago that you think in say the next two years will be almost redundant, so they did feel incredibly integral and important, like this is going to be super important, and now yeah. it's like, oh, actually, this is kind of disappearing. Well, I think, uh, for instance, uh, before it was very decided on uh, what web technology was, like uh, you always go for either like enterprise or yeah. open source, and open source was PHP and MySQL. Now I think we see much more uh, new technologies and working out uh, out in the box. Yeah. Uh, and I yeah, I think the te technology from five years ago that was like that is yeah, yeah it's disappearing. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Almost gone. Mm. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's inevitable. Really, uh, it's how it's how it happens. Yeah. 
the JS community is incredibly passionate and strong, kind of all over the world. And I see a lot of parallels with the hardware community. People mm. meeting up, especially kind of spread of maker spaces. Mm. Is the things that you think the JS community could learn from the hardware community in the way that they organize themselves and kind of um, good things from the hardware community that could be imported into the JS community that aren't already? Um, I'm not sure, but I think that uh, some examples that we've seen yesterday shows how we can be very experiment experimental yeah. with JavaScript yeah. and it does doesn't have to be visual. Uh, and I think like uh, hackathons where you actually make things that are physical with the help of JavaScript would be great. Yeah, that's it would true. Be a great that would event. be fun as well. Yeah, <laughs> like, like uh, the Node.js uh, uh, bots. Yes. Like yeah. Yeah, exactly. The whole space there that isn't. Uh, it's been explored a little bit from the JS community, I guess, but mm. more so from the hardware community using JS. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. But uh, I do think it's interesting to think about that you as a front-end developer or a web developer mm. actually can get into the hardware field yeah. so quickly, yeah. especially now. Yeah, I think that's the magic, the kind of accessibility, like, ah, I, it's not that hard, I can do this. Uh, yeah. I have these tools. There's so much in the hardware space that opens that up to me now. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I think there are loads of good examples of that, like, for instance, Pinocchio boards that you can actually uh, from anywhere on the website you can control with JavaScript. Ah, nice. Yes, yeah. very so nice. Mm. And it's increasingly more friendly, the hardware community. Like uh, there is, I think the, the kind of days of few people sitting around in black t-shirts in a basement is, mm. is dispelled. <laughs> like yeah, and I guess it's kind of almost started off with Arduino when they yeah. Uh, yeah. got artists and developers, everyone around. And worked very hard with that, right? They, they spent yeah. a lot of energy there. Last question. If you could change one thing, and maybe about JavaScript, because I mean you're, you're working with it in a very specific way, I guess. Um, what would you change? You have the power to change anything about JavaScript. That it would be more strict okay. and complain more. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love with the other languages. <laughs> yeah, you would level the, level the field. Yeah. Good, good point. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. We're going to let you go have a break. Uh, live streamers, you can also have a break and join us back after the next talk. Thank you. So thank lovely you. to hear you.